today we are going to build a barn door. All you need is lumber, so I chose one by sixes, um, a one by two, a saw of some sort. I like using my miter saw, measuring tape, pencil, impact drill, sandpaper, sanding block if you want, one and a half inch screws, a jig to make pocket holes, the pocket hole screws, and some stain. I'm going to make my door 82 inches in length. One by sixes, once you put them all together, comes out to about 27.5 in width. Let's get started. First you measure out your first board, and then you just start cutting from there. So I bought rough pines, there's like a lot of splintering. So I'm gonna use 60 grit sandpaper. So the lower the number, the higher the course. So like 60, high course, because it means that there's more rigid bumps on it, where when you get into like 220, that's more fine because the bumps are less coarse. So because there's crazy splintering on these boards, I want to use a lower number sandpaper for higher course. I also wrap my sandpaper around a sanding block because I tend to splinter myself and at least with the block, it prevents that. Now that everything is sanded, you want to lay your boards flat on a level surface and you want to lay them so they're face up, so good side up, what you want to see when you're looking at your door. So this one is technically face down right now because my lumber has stamps on the back side. So I'm just gonna flip this over. And now this is a game of fitting them together and seeing if they can sit nicely with minimal spaces in the middle, like in between each board. I tend to take a lot of time at the hardware store and I really look at my lumber because Lumber comes in all shapes and sizes, and sometimes they can be a little funky. For example, bowing. I check which way it crowns and which way it bows, and at the lumber store, I tend to try and pick the ones that are as straight as possible. These should fit together fairly easily because I did find some pretty straight boards. Now we're gonna flip our boards over so they're face side down. This way we can set up for our pocket hole screws. And I'm literally going to flip them up and over. So pocket holes, you drill into the side of a board and then you put a special screw in that fits into that drill hole that then suctions the two boards together and goes like on the inside you would drill into here the screw goes in and it would sit like that all i mark for my pocket hole screws is i physically draw arrows on the wood in the direction that screw is gonna go. So I have a by or two operational jig. So I'll do two in one direction, two in the opposite direction, and then two in the same direction as the top. So the top and bottom of the door have the same direction. The middle of the door goes a separate way. You don't have to insert pocket screws like that, but I find that it's most secure that way. So these are pocket hole screws. See how it makes that beautiful little circle where the screw goes into and then the pocket is literally where the top of this head sits on. So. It'll go in and rest easy and suck in this other piece of wood. I 
flipped it over and it's not very sturdy yet. Pocket hole screws are meant to make things sturdy, but at the same time, it's more about getting the pieces of wood together. If you use longer screws, it'll be really sturdy. I use shorter screws knowing that I'm putting a header and a footer and a middle piece on that will make it more secure. This was just to get the spaces as even as possible and get the boards in line. So right now we are going to measure for our header, our footer, and our middle piece. Do not assume that if you take one measurement at the top, that it's the same for the middle and the bottom. Like I said, wood comes in all different shapes and sizes and bowing and crowning. You need to measure each section. I bet you it'll be off by an eighth to and a quarter of an inch. Prime example, the top is 27 and a half. The bottom is actually 27 and three quarters. And the bottom is 27 and a half, lucky. That never happens. So to line up the middle board in the exact middle, so I'm gonna do the real math here. Sometimes I just eyeball it, but since I'm doing like a how-to video, I'll actually show you. So this door is 82 inches long. So 82 divided by two, 41. That is the middle point, but this is a one by six. And even though it's a one by six, meaning six inches wide, the actual dimensions are three quarters by 5.5. So 5.5 divided by two is 2.75. So when I lay out my tape measure from the very top, I find 41 and I mark it. And then I backtrack and then going towards the 30s, 2.75. And then I mark it there and that becomes 38 and a quarter. So where 38 and a quarter is from the top, that is the top of my middle board. Ta-da! Now that my middle board is completely center, I am going to finish nail it onto the door. I'm actually going to put screws in this finish nailing portion, completely optional. I'm just doing it, makes it extra secure. I'm using 1.5 inch finish nails. I'm also nailing this in on plywood, so I'm not damaging the floor underneath. Note to you, when nailing something in and it's not like against a wall or something like that, make sure you're not damaging the floor below it. Make sure both sides are flush at the 38 and a quarter mark. Now we're going to make that K shape using the one by two. I like to measure it this way where I take the one by two and I lay it over the header and the body of the board. Using a pencil, I draw a mark and that's my cut. Make sure your pencil is sharp when doing this. That's the only way you're gonna get the line underneath. So like I said, you line up corner, but you also have to line up this side too. So everything's flush to the corners because you want to get the perfect angle. And then I literally slide my pencil under and trace the line against the header. Carefully move over here, make sure everything's still lined up. Same thing, tracing against the middle piece. When I made these angle cuts, even though like I didn't do the math to find the, the correct degree, I made that line, I went to my miter saw and I put the piece on straight and adjusted my miter in the direction to the exact degree of the line that I made. So now I'm going to tack these in. Again, this part is optional. I prefer to do it so it stays in place. So once I screw everything in, nothing moves. So 
I'm lining everything up so it's flush. I'm just gonna throw one, pull this where I want it, two. I'll do that again down there. And then I am going to drill pilot holes for my wood screws that are going in. The reason I drill pilot holes is because wood grain loves to separate when you just drive something really hard into it. So if you carefully make your pilot holes, then your screw will go in seamlessly, no cracking. So I used a total of 10 screws. I did two, 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 two. And then you'll see my mistake up here. You know, this is why you should actually do math. My angle is a little bit off. I'm like the rest that are super flush. The good thing is that's the top of my door. So I'm going to put the barn door hardware kit over that so you won't see it. Otherwise you could use wood filler and fill it in. Just staining it, the color would come out a little different on wood filler. It's ready to be stained, dry, put the handle on and hung. Making myself some espresso before I stain. The closet's done. I'm so excited. Side. It's just perfect.